here we have a model of a piece of furniture. It's a vanity type cabinet with, I'm assuming, a porcelain sink on top with a faucet. Something you might see inside of a bathroom setting. And we're going to use this model to discuss two new pieces of functionality found in PhotoView 360 2010. Those being brightness control and custom environments. So let's start with the environment functionality first, and then that'll lead us into the brightness functionality. There is no direct lighting option in PhotoView 360, meaning there is no way to add specific spot, point, or directional lights as there is in SolidWorks. Rather, PhotoView 360 uses one of the 30 included environment presets to calculate the lighting and reflection information of our scene. If we click the environment icon to bring up the environments palette, we'll cycle through a few environments to illustrate what I was trying to explain. We could use a studio room environment, which would be similar to some sort of photography setup if I was trying to shoot this product inside of a photography studio. You can see when I double click that environment, it changed the lighting and reflections on our model. If we wanted to use a more real world indoor lighting setup, we could, we could try the kitchen environment. Double clicking that, you can see it greatly changes both the lighting and reflections on our model. We're getting much more uh, reflections on our sink and on our hardware, even on, even on the wood itself of our vanity. Or we could switch back to another studio lighting setup, the abstract studio, which is where we started. And you can see again that totally changes the lighting and reflections of our image as well. Just to briefly explain how environments work, an environment is essentially a 360 degree image that PhotoView 360 wraps around your geometry. And then using rendering technology, it extracts the lighting and reflection information and uses that information to calculate the values in your scene and therefore create your rendering. One of the limitations in the past in PhotoView 360 has been the inability to use your own custom images for an environment. Images such as HDRI images have been specifically created for rendering lighting and reflection setup, and those images are available at various sources. And now in PhotoView 360 2010, the user has the ability to use those custom environment images to create their renderings. One of the advantages of using your own environment image is better matching the environment, the lighting and the reflections to the actual product that you're trying to render. In this case, we have this furniture that would probably be found in some sort of bathroom setting. And if we had an environment image that was a bathroom, we could more easily recreate real-world lighting and reflection situations that we would find in an actual bathroom. So let's take a look at how we can actually add a bathroom environment image to our PhotoView 360 scene. If we click the Settings icon to bring up the Settings palette on the Environment Settings tab, in the load environment images area, you'll notice the second option is load environment image. I'm going to click that. It's going to bring up a browse box and I happen to have a bath HDR file here that I'm going to use for my environment. And once I select that, you'll see that it loads into PhotoView 360 and we are now getting what should be more real world lighting results uh, from an actual bathroom image. And you can actually see the image uh, in the background behind our product. And I'm going to show you how you can actually remove that image and still use its lighting and reflection qualities a little later on. If we examine this preview window rendering for a moment, I'd like you to take note of the overall lighting of the product from this environment image. And I'd also like you to take note of the reflection of a window and some lighting in our sink. PhotoView 360 also gives us controls to manipulate the lighting and reflection position and placement so that we can fine tune our final rendering image. If we click the settings icon to bring up the settings palette, on the environment settings tab at the top, the second option is environment rotation. By default, it's set to 180 degrees. We can input a value here. I'm going to use zero. And when I do that, the real-time preview window updates immediately. And you can see our image in the background has shifted position by 180 degrees. 
And that has also caused our lighting and reflections on our product to change. The window that was here on the corner of the sink is now gone. Looks like we may be looking at uh, some sort of clock here, maybe a mirror. And also the, the reflections and lighting on our granite top have changed as well, as well as the overall lighting for our overall scene. Now, we may like this lighting and reflection setup that our background image is producing, but maybe the background image itself is kind of annoying while we're setting up our rendering. If we go to the visibility area on the settings palette and expand that, you can see that we have some controls there. And one of the controls is show environment. So by default, when you load an environment image, that checkbox becomes checked. If we uncheck that, it turns off our background environment and just allows us to work without seeing the environment. However, the lighting and reflections from the environment are still affecting our model. So let's say this is the environment rotation setup that we like. It's providing the lighting and reflections we like. But we wish that the model itself was just a bit brighter. Now, as I told you before, PhotoView 360 has no ability to specifically control lighting. The only way to do that is to adjust your environment, as I have showed you, by, by using your own image or a stock PhotoView 360 environment preset and then rotating that environment to adjust your lighting and reflections that way. So in PhotoView 360 2010, the functionality has been added to brighten your geometry if need be. So if we go to the Output Settings tab, in the settings palette. In the image processing area, you'll notice we have the brightness control, which has been added. And by default, it's set to one. If we increase that brightness number, we'll go to two. You can see that that affects the brightness of our product. And it does so independently of the background. So if I go back and make that background environment visible, and we change our brightness to four, you'll see the geometry itself is changing brightness, but the background environment, and if we had a background image there, those would not be affected by our brightness setting. So let's go back and turn off that environment image. And just like going higher increases the brightness, if we go lower than one, we make that a 0.5, you'll see it makes our product darker. So the brightness setting is really controlling the intensity of our environment image and therefore controlling how much contribution the environment image lighting is making to the overall scene.